Hi everyone, it's Ashley. Thank you so much for clicking on my video tonight. Guys, let's just go ahead and hop right in. I am so, so excited with the crafts that I have to bring you tonight. So as you can see, I have a lot of elements. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Jumping right in, I just set my sweet little Santa there to the side. I simply have this DIY Christmas tree. This is from the Dollar Tree, so it is a $1.25, and it just comes in this bare wood. So why I kind of wanted to start with this tonight is because my idea for this is I have this really pretty um, pattern paper here that I thought would look really nice on my tree. So in the spirit of just trying to do something a little different and something without words on it, I thought that this might be a nice place to start. So I wanted to do this first just so we could get this down, get it mod podged, and then that way it'll have enough time to dry while we do our other crafts. And then we can come back and finish this up at the end. So just coming in with the foam brush, I'm simply going to dip that in there and then I'm going to simply apply a generous amount of Mod Podge over the entire tree. Um, like I said in another video, I do keep the backs. I do keep the backs of like any paper packs that I finish or that just kind of come apart on me. Um, and I use those backs to then paint on so I don't get my desk all dirty. So that is just simply what I have under my Christmas tree here. And I think that is a great solution because let me tell you, anytime I paint or Mod Podge or anything of the sorts, I get it absolutely everywhere. So with that being said, I try to limit my mess as much as I can. So I'm just gonna go through applying this Mod Podge I do want to be mindful that I want to try to get Mod Podge all the way to all of my edges, right? Because that is kind of where you will tend to have um, some issues getting your paper to stay down. So just make sure that you're getting those edges really nice. And then just simply seeing which way I want my pattern paper to go. Um, I think that this way looks just fine. I'm just going to kind of line it up to the bottom of my Christmas tree here. So just bringing that down just so it's just covering the bottom. And then I'm just gonna simply push up all the way up to the top of that tree. And then I'll just kind of go out, right? So simply using my hands to kind of flatten out this paper onto our tree, making sure that I get all the way to my edges. This is also a great time to bring in a brayer tool if you have one. Um, if not, it's not a huge deal. You do not need it, it's not necessary. Um, but if you have one, I do think that this is a great, great, great time to use it. It will really just help that you really get nice adhesion between your blank and your paper. So I just simply have this one. It's from Hobby Lobby. It's just their brand, the 405. Now I know that I do want to hang this um, once it is complete. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just flipping this over. I'm gonna see where my hole is for my hanger. And let's see. I'm simply gonna kind of make just a little, little tiny puncture hole. And then that way I know on the front where to go. But then I'm gonna come in this way with my weeding tool and simply just poke a hole. I wanna come from the front, just like that. Here is my little hole. And you wanna make sure that you're coming from the front so that way your paper's kind of pushed down into that hole, right? We want to try to get that as smooth as possible. So that looks really nice. I'm just gonna turn it over, make sure that all of my pieces are kind of sticking down. And that looks really good. So I'm simply going to set this under something heavy and we're going to let this dry, do a few more crafts, and then we'll come back. Bringing in my next two little blinks here, you guys saw me make over these little ornaments that I got from Hobby Lobby that I posted recently. And I will link that video right up in the corner, but I did tell you that I would go back into Design Space and cut something to go on the front of these which I did, and we are going to apply these. Now, I do have 
three other ones that I still have not applied pattern vinyl to because I want to try a different pattern vinyl. Um, so I still have three that are completely blank. And then I do have one more that has this pattern on it. which I will be using. I just haven't found a design for it just yet. Now I will tell you for these little ornaments, my idea and my preferred way to use them is I like to use these as gift tags. And then I feel like once, you know, like I give the gift, then they can use it, you know, as decor or they can use it however they want. But I prefer to, like I said, use them as gift tags. I will put this on just a, you know, super simple, um, very inexpensive type of gift. And I just think it adds a little something, right? So it's all, for me, it's all about taking, you know, small little things that, you know, maybe don't cost as much, but really putting a lot of heart into them. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna have to recut this top one because I just totally destroyed that M there. But let's move on and see if we can salvage the rest of this. Now I will tell you, I have used this green vinyl before and I had really good luck with it. So I wasn't expecting a fight. So maybe that was kind of my mistake as I came in a little too confident, but no problem. Let's just slow down a little and I think we will be able to make it through. Famous last words. Okay, so I just found these two cute little designs in Cricut Design Space. It says, remember, less is more on the first one. And then the second one says, you will never guess. And I just thought these were super cute and playful, which, you know, I kind of like, especially with this kind of really classic and vintage looking pattern. I just thought it would be super cute to do a little gift tag that was just a little more on the playful side. On this one here, I did accidentally mess up my little M here in the remember. So I will have to go back into the Cricut Design Space and I will simply just recut that one M and place it in. But I will not do it tonight. I do have to leave it on my desk and make sure, make sure, make sure that I do do it before I hand this out because that is totally something I would do. So I do need to make sure that I do get it done, but I'm not going to do it tonight. Like I said, I've used this vinyl. This is the one from Expressions Vinyl, and I've had really, really good luck with it. But this time it does seem that my Cricut cut maybe just a little deep. So I'm just getting that liner kind of on my vinyl. So just having to go through and kind of put a little extra effort into getting that off which I have been having a lot of issues with my Cricut Joy. So I kind of stopped using it for a while. I decided to kind of get it back out and kind of clean it off and get back to using it. So everything that I cut tonight was cut on my Cricut Joy. Yeah, everything was cut on my Cricut Joy, I'm pretty sure, except for one of my large signs. But I cut everything on my Cricut Joy and it seemed like it was doing okay. Um, it is a brand new blade, so sometimes, you know, it's just a little on the sharp side and it can get a little bit of a deep cut. So I'm thinking maybe I had that issue. I'm not sure. However, I hope that the issues that I've been having with my Joy are resolved because let me tell you, I absolutely love my Cricut Joy. It sits right where it's sitting now, um, usually, and... I use it all the time just for quick little things 
that I need to get done. A lot of the times, you know, a lot of the things that I cut, unless I'm cutting a large sign for my home, are pretty small in nature. So I absolutely love having my Cricut Joy. And it was also a gift from my husband. So I just, it holds a special place in my heart. I did decide to just go in and just create just a little bit of an offset for these because I was scared that my sentiment might get a little lost on that pattern paper. So to combat that, I thought, well, I'll just put an offset around it so that way it's a little easier to read, right? So I think that is always a great choice if you're worried about your text getting lost if you're putting it on top of a pattern. Just a little offset can do wonders, right? So I just layered that on top of one another and then put it down on my ornament. And look how cute that came out. I think it's super sweet. And like I said, I do need to go back in and cut that M, but I think it came out so cute, I love it. Okay, let's do the other one really quickly. And I thought this one was so cute. It says, you will never guess. And I feel like this is so funny if it's like something very obviously wrapped, you know, or kind of something that's not wrapped and it's like just a gift tag on it. So I thought this one was super cute. And I actually have um, an idea for who this is gonna go to and what the gift's gonna be. So with that in mind, I think it's that much funnier. So I am excited to get these done and kind of get them to their new person come the holidays. Now I gotta kinda see, there we go. I was gonna say, I gotta kinda see which way is which, where it's gonna go here, but just again, placing this. Now you could always take and use a piece of parchment paper, right? That will give you a lot of extra time when you're layering. For me, I think that this is easy enough and I put the offset so close to the letters that I think that it's pretty much, I think it's pretty easy if I take my time. So there we go, not too bad. Yeah, my Cricut Joy is definitely cutting a little deep, but like I said, it is a brand new blade and I have noticed that that can happen with a new blade. So I'm hoping as that kind of dulls a little, um, my Cricut Joy will be as good as new because I absolutely love my little Joy. All right, guys, those are two little gifts off my checklist. So let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay, so bringing in a lot of stuff, right? So I will tell you, this is very much a involved craft for me. I'm typically just very simple in my crafting, but this is also probably the craft that I am the most looking forward to. So I just wanna kind of run through some things and then we'll get started. And I'll tell you kind of what I'm thinking. So starting off, this is a door hanger. It is from Target, it is $5. Carry it most of the time. I always see them in my store. Now, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, you have probably seen this door hanger. Um, this is the one that had the bow and the hanger already attached to it. I did finally decide to rip that off and give it a new coat of my favorite chalk paint. And I'm going to turn this into a Christmas hanger. And then with the way that we're running with this tonight, I'm going to hot glue some things. So this will probably be either a permanent um, Christmas decoration in my home or it will be the last time I use it. So either way, we're gonna use that. I also have this Santa head here. Now, this is like a 3D Santa head, right? So his mustache is raised, the top, the little fluffy part of his hat is raised. He is from the Dollar Tree and he was just one of those like DIY Santas. So he wasn't in like the bare wood, but like the MDF wood. So like that darker kind of paper, um, type material. So that is how he came. Everything was that color. And I went in with this paint here. It's just an acrylic paint from the Target dollar spot. It was $1. It does not have a name on it. 
Oh yeah, it does. It just says brown. So I used that mixed with some white chalk paint to do his skin tone. And then I used this Apple Barrel Matte Acrylic craft paint in the Tuscan red and I used that for his hat and then I used white chalk paint for his mustache and the fluffy bits and then I just did a little bit of like you know a little highlight on his hat and I tried to do a little shading on the side I'm not super like the best at painting so I tried to be a little artistic that is how I got Santa to look how he is now right so with that being said, I thought it would be super cute to then put Santa on our door hanger and use this for my home, right? So now I will tell you, Santa did have a hole here at the top. I'll try to show you. I don't know if I can really get it, but that is a little hole there. He was on a hanger. I didn't want the hanger and I didn't want the hole there. So I simply filled that little hole with some hot glue and then painted over it. And it's very hard to tell in person. You can barely notice it. So yes, just know that is a great hack. If something has like a hole where there is a hanger, it is usually pretty easy to kind of fill it with some hot glue and then paint over it. Um, I do that a lot and like I said, it's hard It's hard to tell that you do it. So unless someone's really, really looking, um, usually it's just fine. So I also decided to go in and just cut a little sentiment here. Um, I didn't want much, right? So the Santa definitely takes up most of my door hanger and I want, definitely wanted him to kind of be the focus. However, I did wanna put just a little something on the side here. And I also thought I had these little puff balls also from the Dollar Tree. I actually got them like in Easter time because I used them for like a bunny tail. So I was also thinking that it might be cute to put that for his little hat. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is kind of start with laying my Santa. Now I want him just a little tilted and I want to give myself just a little extra room on this side here to put my little ho ho ho. So I'm thinking right about there will be pretty good. I'm gonna turn him over. And here you can actually see the color that he started really well. So just coming in quickly because I am using hot glue, I'm just gonna simply go around focusing on my edges and just try to get as much glue as I can down while also giving myself time to get it flipped over and down. Okay, so that looks just about good to me. I'm just gonna go through and just really press this down. Okay, so that laid down perfectly. I think that looks great. Um, let's go ahead, should we put this little puff ball for his hat? I don't know, I don't know if it's too much or if it's like just enough. I don't know, I think it's super cute and playful. I'm gonna go for it. Um, if it's not your taste, by all means, you do not need to add that. But I think it's playful and cute, so I'm going to go for it. And I think that looks so cute. I really do like that. So... And I think that this should be just perfect, just long enough. And then I will just burnish this down front and back. Now I will tell you for the text, I simply go in Cricut Design Space, I make a shape the size of my circle, right? So this was like, I think just over 11 um, wide. And then I just kind of go in and contour and curve and play with my text until I like the shape. And then I cut it and it's usually close enough that it works really well with my blank. So that is a great tip if you're trying to kind of curve some text to the blank you're working on, right? And if you guys need more help with that, please let me know. I can show you a whole video on it, no problem. Oh my gosh, guys, look how cute he's coming out. I love it. Oh my gosh. But I have to tell you, I need to put a hanger on this. I don't feel like my door hangers are quite finished until I put a hanger. I'm just going to cut a piece of this ribbon and then I'm just going to kind of focus on 
where my Santa is and I'm gonna call that the top. And then taking my ribbon here, I will just kind of see where Santa is, kind of where I want the top of this. Now I did put Santa a little to an angle, right? So I don't wanna focus solely on that. I wanna kind of look at everything together and kind of decide where I want the top of this to be. So that looks just about good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that should be good. Okay, so let's flip him over. Now, I probably should have put that little puff on his hat. I probably should have done that after this part because this is not laying flat on my craft desk. But I also think that it will be okay. Just something to note if you decide to do this yourself. Maybe put that puff on after you glue down your hanger, right? Now, I do have that cute little um, finger protector from Dollar Tree. It works great. I just never remember to grab it. And then by the time I do remember to grab it, I'm already like halfway done and I'm like, ah, uh, I'm, I'm almost done, you know? So if you haven't picked those up yet, it is a great buy. They really are helpful and they really do save your fingers. So use your finger protectors. Wow, so this is how my Santa door hanger came out. I am so happy with this. I honestly wasn't exactly sure where this was gonna go. I actually started with the Santa and I just started to paint him just because I thought it was fun and it was just really cute and I thought it would be cute to paint him. So literally just for me painting this, um, I then decided to put them on the door hanger and then I decided to cut a little bit of vinyl and then I decided to put the hanger. So it really is just a testament to, you know, just kind of taking one little piece of something and being inspired by it and running with that inspiration and running with that moment of creativity and seeing where it takes you, right? I had no idea how this was going to come out. I had no idea that this is what I was gonna make, but here it is, and I think it might be one of my favorite crafts I've ever made. Now, I will tell you, and I am super, super interested, I really wanna know, I debated so, so long on putting, on cutting eyes for my Santa, and just putting like maybe some little gray eyes. I could not make up my mind if I wanted to do that or not, so, I'm trying to decide and I really, really want you guys' opinion and I want your help. So let me know in the comments below, should I go in and cut eyes for my Santa or is it cute like this? All right guys, so let's go ahead and finish up with our door hanger here and we will move on to our next craft. So I'm gonna bring back in my Christmas tree here just because I want to see how it's doing and I wanna see if I need to apply any more Mod Podge or how it's kind of drying here. So just bringing in my tree, my Dollar Tree cutting mat that I love, and then I have my Cricut True Control knife here. I'm simply gonna go through and just loosely following the lines of my tree, I'm simply going to go through and cut it out. So I probably sped through um, a lot of that, but this is just simply how my little Christmas tree came out. And I think that this is so cute. I am absolutely loving this. And in the spirit of kind of having more 
wordless art, right? I am gonna simply leave this like this for now. Um, if I choose to go in and add anything to it, I will show you guys that, but for now, I think that this is absolutely perfect just the way it is. I'm simply gonna take this little piece of ribbon here. I'll show you in just a second. I just found this in my stash. It's simply like a natural kind of color and then a red. And I'm simply gonna use my weeding tool to kind of help me get through that, through the hanger up top. And then just pulling this to an equal distance, I'll just simply do a little knot at the top here. And there we go. Look how cute this little Dollar Tree Christmas tree is. And honestly, I mean, the Mod Podge trick with paper is always super, super easy. It's one of my go-tos. It's just super simple. There's not much to it. All you need is, you know, a shape, some scrapbook paper, and a piece of ribbon. And you have a complete piece of decor here. And I absolutely love it. All right, guys, let's move on. Okay, bringing in my next little blank here, I just have this sign. It is from Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. It was reduced to $1.79. And I simply bought this, um, obviously, for the frame itself. It's just a super nice size frame. And it did have some design on the front there. I simply painted that over with chalk paint and now I have a super large um, frame sign right for $1.79 so I will tell you Hobby Lobby is one of my favorite places to get blanks I have really good luck finding things on clearance there so um, I will say if you are in the market it is a good place to kind of look for those things, right? So I simply went in and cut this really sweet design that I found. And it just says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And I cut this out of that same green that I used in um, previous videos and I used in this video earlier. And it is just the absolute perfect Christmas green. So I am loving that. Oh my gosh, I literally just went on like a three minute hunt for the other part of my little swoosh here for my C. But I remembered that I had to cut it and put it here because I only had a 12 by 12 sheet of this. So that is funny. Okay, so just coming through weeding my middles here. I have to tell you guys, I have just started reading a new book well, let me rephrase that. I started listening to a new book because I read a lot of my books on my Kindle and I use like Hoopla or Libby and I just kind of like rent them from my local library. So um, my Hoopla app, I, they, my library only had it in audiobook, which was fine because it's actually worked out really well, but I've been listening to A Merry Heart in a Martha World by Joanna Weaver. And wow, I am, I think like just past chapter five, I think at the end of chapter five. And if you enjoy faith-based um, books, I highly recommend this book. It has really, really spoken to my heart recently. So bringing in this scrap piece of transfer tape, it's not quite big enough, but I am going to kind of start with this and I think that I'm going to kind of make this work because this is a fairly large design and I really don't want to cut um, a piece of transfer tape this large just because I don't have any large signs um, that I need to get done that I know of right now. So I just kind of want to try to work with what I have. So with that being said, this covered most of it. So I really just have this little tail here. So bringing in my other little scrap pieces, I think that this might just help us. 
And then bringing in that tail from my other side here that I needed to cut off, I'm just gonna trim this and then let's try to match this up and see if we can get it transferred at the same time. So now I will say it, this is definitely a little on the sketchy side here. I have like three pieces of transfer tape and I'm gonna try to transfer my whole design here at the same time. And a little bit of my Y here is not covered and a little bit of my leaf here. So this is, like I said, a little haphazard. So if you're just starting out, definitely just cut a piece of transfer tape as big as your design and that will definitely help you get everything laid down super easily but you know since i just like a challenge i am going to try to work with what i have here right so i think that it will all be okay now let's bring in our blank and now the only thing is is this little part here is yeah let's just move that for now because it's like barely hanging i don't know though because i need it to line it up right yeah i need it so let's see, I'm gonna put it on top so that way it hopefully won't stick and then I can like kind of readjust it, but I need it to kind of help me center this. Now you could definitely bring in some parchment paper that will absolutely also help you. I'm gonna kind of just wing it here, but feel free to bring in some parchment paper that will definitely help with your placement. And I think that that looks pretty good. Let's see. Okay, so I just put my little tail over there for just a second. We will get that on. But since I kind of have my placement here, I want to kind of focus on this first and get this all laid down. And then we can go in and put that down. And I'm just going to simply burnish this down. Because I don't want any of those pieces coming up when I go to remove my transfer tape here. Okay, so that's how that came out and I think it looks great. Now I'm just gonna simply kind of lay this down with my hands, I think. I could definitely bring in some transfer tape or even some tweezers might help, but I think I'm just, you know, in the name of Ashley, just kind of wing it here per usual to just kind of line this up. There we go, and I think that looks great. So this is how my little sign came out. How cute is this? Now I will tell you, I did go in, like I said, and paint this with a layer of white chalk paint. My paint job is not perfect. It will fit right in in my home, so I am not worried about that. But I absolutely love how this design came out. And look at this beautiful piece of Christmas decor I have for essentially $1.74 um, because everything else I had on hand, right? So how cute is that? I love it. All right, guys, let's go on to our last craft. Okay, guys, so bringing you in just a little because our last little craft is a little smaller in nature and I really want you guys to kind of be right with me here and see what we're doing. This project also has quite a few little moving pieces here. Now the blank that I'm using is this little sign from the Dollar Tree. I'm sure we all have seen them by now. I just cut down a piece of cardstock to go inside of it. So I will tell you that the inside of this frame is not exactly five by five, but I just go ahead and use my paper trimmer and cut down a piece of cardstock to five by five. And then from there, I will just take my scissors and just kind of start trimming. And it's literally just kind of trial and error. I've tried to measure it and I feel like I just, it never really seems to be right. If that makes any sense, I don't know. I know it defies like 
logic, but that's just kind of what I found. So I tend to just do it this way. It just gives me a little more control over it. And honestly, it's less frustrating than trying to figure out the measurement and it's not working, right? So with that being said, you know, just a little patient. And eventually you will get it just right, but it does take some patience. Usually the hardest part for me is not like getting super frustrated and cutting it too short, like right at the last minute, cause I just am over it and I'm like, okay, this is not working. So my idea for this was, this is going to be the little sign that goes in front of my daughter's room. Um, if you've been on my channel, you know that I change this out seasonally, um, just kind of as a little treat for her just to kind of know what to look forward to and what we're celebrating next. I decided to do a cute little gingerbread house. Now, I did cut this out of this just pretty enough um, gold premium vinyl, but you know, I was thinking about it and I knew I wanted to use this paper as the background because I kind of wanted like a snowy night gingerbread feeling to it, right? I wanted it to be like a snowy night in gingerbread land. However, I don't know, I just was not really filling the gold, um, especially with this paper, and I knew that I wanted to use this paper. So at the last second, I decided to go in and cut this out of the puff vinyl that I used in my last video. So I do not have any idea how this is gonna work out, but I thought it was worth giving it a shot because if it does work out, I think that this will be so, so cute. So simply going in, I'm gonna weed out my gingerbread house here. It does have some little pieces, so just taking my time. And back to what I was saying about the book. Yeah, if you like faith-based books, it's really, really good. And wow, it has just really, really spoken to my heart and kind of where I am right now. And there's literally a quote that I heard for the first time and I actually like had to stop and go back and I listened to it probably five times and then I decided to make a note of it in my phone in the little, you know, note app. And the quote was, any concern too small to be turned into a prayer is too small to be made into a burden, right? So yeah, any concern too small to be turned into a prayer is too small to be made into a burden. And I'm sorry, I did not write down who it was, who said it. Um, the author did quote someone when she said it, but man, that really, really just really spoke to me and I really had it on my heart to share that quote in today's video. So I hope that hearing that helped you today if it was something that you needed to hear. So with that being said, this is my little gingerbread house all finished up. I did with, we accidentally weed out one of my little windows here. So I will be replacing that. With that being said, what I did was I cut out three of the background layers and I cut that on 80 pound cardstock. And then I went in and cut this to put on top of one of my layers, right? So this will literally just sit right on top. And let's put my little window back down before I forget. Now I did say in my last video where I used this, this backer sheet is not very sticky, so just be aware of that. It's not as sticky as some other brands you may be used to using. And I also will put a full disclaimer here. This has no instructions for being used on paper. Now, regular HTV, you can definitely use on paper. I do it all the time. It's no problem whatsoever. This, um, I'm not sure. So we will test this together right now. I don't know how it's going to come out, but... Like I said, we are gonna find out together. So that placement looks really good to me. For the size and nature of this, I'm gonna bring in my Easy Press Mini on the first line, which is low. Now, the original directions for this was 10 seconds at 310. So I'm gonna kind of just put my Easy Press down 
and I'm gonna kind of go over it for a few seconds. I don't know. I'm literally winging this and it's literally puffing up as I speak, but I'm just gonna kind of wing it and see what looks good. Okay, so like I said, the original directions was 310 for 10 seconds. So, you know, I don't know, there was no instructions for this. So I just kind of did whatever I wanted. And this is how it came out. I will tell you, it's definitely not as puffy as it was like when I used it on the sweatshirt. But I also think that it's also super, super cute. And I love that texture. It's probably not exactly what you would hope for in a puff vinyl if you were using it under like normal circumstances. But I think for this, the color and the texture is absolutely 100% what I'm going for. Now, just because I have this foam brush here with Mod Podge on it that I used on my Christmas tree, I'm simply going to bring this in and use it to apply my different layers of my gingerbread house. Normally, I would use my craft glue. That's what I normally use. Um, but like I said, just because I have this out and it's already here, I will just go ahead and use this. Okay, so you should get something just about like that. That looks pretty good. And then this foam brush honestly is pretty dried up. So for the next layer, I will just go ahead and bring in my art glitter glue. And just bringing this all around, all the way to the edge. Simply lay down some of that glue. And now I'm gonna put on our top layer here. So once again, just bringing this in, trying to get it as lined up as I can. And this craft glue gives you just a little bit of wiggle time. So, but I got that pretty nice there. It looks very nice. Okay, and I'm just going to set this under my little notebook here for just a moment. And we'll kind of let that dry for a second. Now bringing in just my little gingerbread house that is now three layers thick. Oops, and you see I had a little pattern on this back one. It was just a scrap piece of cardstock that I had, so it has a little pattern on the back. I forgot about that. But this is just my little gingerbread house. It came out so, so cute. I am actually loving this puff vinyl like this for the texture. I think that looks so cute. And especially for the gingerbread house, I mean... I love it. So just to give myself a little more dimension here because, you know, enough is just never enough with me. I'm gonna simply bring in some foam tape from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna kind of place this around to give myself some extra height and dimension. And then I'll simply bring in my weeding tool. This will help me get my backs up. All right, and then let's bring in our little house and get it in our frame. So just kind of, I actually think that I want it sitting like on the bottom ledge here. So I'm just gonna kind of nestle that maybe right up to my frame like just about there maybe. And there we go, there's my little frame. What do you guys think? How cute is that? And oh my gosh, look at all that dimension we get. So it's literally cast a shadow behind my gingerbread house. Wow, that is awesome. I love this. This was the craft that I was probably the most unsure about um that's why i decided to do it last because i was like well if it comes out horribly i can just like cut it out of the video and act like it never happened and just like that it has become my favorite craft of the night 
All right, guys, with that being said, I am definitely getting tired. So I think I'm gonna have to call it a night, but let's bring in everything that we got done and see what we did. Oh my gosh, guys, look at everything we got done tonight. I have to say, you know, I said that this gingerbread was probably my favorite craft of the night. And I don't know, I kind of still think that it is, but I also forgot about our Santa. And I don't know, this is really, really a close runner up. I am super happy with how my door hanger came out. I also love this Christmas tree though, just because it's super simple. And this effectively cost me $1.25 to make. And I just think what a nice touch this is in your home, right? Something that is just beautiful without actually saying anything. So I don't know. I have a lot of favorites tonight. And I think that this may be one of my favorite collections. So I thank you guys so very much for watching this video. It has been one of my favorites. And I am truly blessed that you are here. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.